Hey everyone, my name's Walter, and we're back here today to finish the story I've been reading. I'll link to part one in the description, but this is a very long story about a nice guy. Nice guys are men who talk about how nice they are, and they usually think this should be enough to get them a girlfriend. But they generally have other issues. You'll see if you don't already know, so let's just get into it with Nice Guy Stories from Reddit. Four years in uni with Nice Guy. This story comes to us from Reddit Nice Guy Stories, a place where you too can leave stories about the devil shivering and all that. So last time we stopped in the middle of an email to his teacher, which he also added a part addressed to the OP, accusing her friends and parents of turning her against him. With no evidence, of course. This guy is writing total fiction right now. Anyway, let's begin. If this is really the answer, then I'm sorry you let those jealous people drive you crazy. This answer is also the most likely for me, and corresponds well with how you were acting, and how you started to distance yourself more and more, and became annoyed, and why you were sometimes my best friend, but a week later, you were distant, and then my best friend again. This happened every now and then, and I always thought it was strange, and you always apologize for this too. But in all honesty blank, at least with this answer, I would also understand why you were acting this way, and why you unfriended me if this was the case. I wish you had told me this, and how it made you feel. Then we probably could have worked it out in a good way together. She doesn't want to do anything with you, dude. Let's summarize what was actually happening. He would do something out of line, generally touching her or saying something weird, and then she would cut him off. Then he'd pout and be mad about it until she gave in. That is not a best friend relationship at all. I've always tried to be a good friend to you. I really hope you think about this too, and can let go of your current feelings that you currently have, and just see me for who I am. I said this before, but say it again. I really hope you become a well-known animator. You are super talented, and hopefully on graduation day you can at least say goodbye to me before you go back to Germany. I will also say this, it is not me who is keeping busy with you, but it's you, blank, who keeps busy with me. Why are you getting so upset when you see me? Are you confused or regretting something? Do you even understand why you are doing this? Why are you making such a big deal of this? I never did anything wrong. I haven't spoken to you more than half year, and haven't contacted you in any form this half year. Why do you want me to be this character that you created in your head? Try asking yourself some questions, Blank. Maybe that will help you understand it all more for yourself, too. The OP has something to say here. It's about something I read in the last video, though. Note here that he says he believes my parents would prefer him as my partner rather than my partner of the time, female. As if he could hold a candle to literally any human who has a basic understanding of boundaries. Basically calling my parents homophobic and saying he is better by the simple fact he has a penis. I actually asked my dad at the graduation day, Kevin was not there, if he would be happy with Kevin as my boyfriend. My friends, who all knew of Kevin's antics, lost their shit when my dad, in very clear terms, called him a fucking loser. Well, back to the email. I don't deserve all this, and you know that yourself. We are almost done with our education. Is this really the way you want it to end between us with all this misunderstanding? You are the writer of this story, not me, so pick your ending. You know I don't deserve this. Hope you can give me some rest, Blank. In any case, I have written this letter and tried to clear up the misunderstandings that I think were at play, and said for the biggest part what I wanted to say to you in person, instead in this letter. I hope that the picture for you is now more complete, that I have told you all this, and just give me my rest, just like I give you that too. Hopefully you will now have that too after this letter. I'll leave it at that and let this be the end of this drama. Goodbye, blank. End section piece for blank. Conclusion. I have also sent this message to blank, as you probably already have seen. To my letter, I just want to say that I don't want any response from this that doesn't help this situation in any positive way possible. Please leave me alone. I just want to keep my focus on my studies and all the work that I must catch up for my depression. I just want to finish this education and try to forget this year and a half. Obviously, Blank doesn't want to talk to me and prefers to live in her fantasy world and the character that she has made of me. I hope she can let go of that image and really think about it, but that takes time and there isn't any. I'll leave it at that. It's not used to have any more talks and it only makes me unhappy every time I hear something from you, teacher. Which is about Blank, and I just get the blamed for something I didn't even do. Why does he keep saying their names? This is an email addressed to the person. You don't have to keep saying their fucking name in your sentences. Gotta wonder if he wrote his essays like this. To you, teacher, I say that I am enormously disappointed in you. 
when we talked shortly, I thought you were nice and maybe could do proper research on your own by asking the correct questions. I will also say that you are also partly responsible for this situation getting out of hand, because of the position you take in all of this. I blame you that you have already judged me without having asked any good questions or done proper research. I can only conclude this answer when I look at your letter. You clearly didn't ask Blank any questions that would give insight about this whole situation. You only heard Blank talk about me and heard me for only 10 minutes. I just get this letter from you without a warning, full of consequences. And you also would send a letter to my home address and bother me in my private sphere with this nonsense. This guy's now just getting more and more unhinged. Now we get to the part where he threatens the teacher and demands an apology. I am now going to make my demand that you better follow up for your own career. Where are you going to apologize to me personal in a letter? Otherwise, I would be forced to report this to the school committee and demand that your misbehavior of conduct is included in your file. I will also talk to the director about you and your sexism, prejudice, slander, and disregard of my health and report it to the authorities immediately if nothing is done about it. I'm going to file a complaint against you and the school if nothing is done to the authority. Any other mail from you that is not an apology, I will also regard as slander of my name and disregard to my health, which I find very worrisome of someone who works at a school. Any action other than an apology would lead me to take the before-mentioned steps against you. I'm really glad I'm not a teacher. I'd smack the shit out of this guy or laugh in his face, not sure which, if he sent me this email. Okay, so this didn't happen in America, so take this with a grain of salt, but you can't get in trouble with the police for slander. It's a civil matter. And you have to actually prove damages, which I'd love to see this guy try. I am letting you get of easy, with an apology since you did help me, and I am grateful for that. But I won't stand for this sexism prejudice, slander of my good name, this unrespect full behavior towards me and disregard of my health. Hopefully you will do the right thing and see for yourself when you read all this that I haven't done anything wrong and that making an apology is the correct thing to do here. I will say it again. This letter is the end for me and to this whole situation. Yours truly, Kevin. The colors, by the way, were his choice. He color-coded the email from parts that were intended for the teacher and parts that were intended for me. I replaced my name with blank and the name of the teacher with teacher. This email came within 24 hours of Kevin receiving his warning of not contacting me in any way, shape, or form, and keeping his distance from me in classrooms and not posting my images anywhere. 24 hours. He sent this to me directly via email, which is him contacting me. Not just that, he told the teacher he did it. What the fuck? This happened on a weekend. He received the warning on a Friday. His response came on a Saturday. And the week after, I was sick, so I was not able to attend school. But Kevin thought that his email must have struck me so hard that I was scared that I couldn't show up for school. So he sent me a WhatsApp message, violating his warning further. Not sure if the author mentions this, but it seems he sent this message on Valentine's Day. Guess he was feeling romantic. Hi, Blank. It's been a while. I thought a lot of what happened and how you behaved towards me. I don't know why you behave this way towards me. After all, I can't read minds and I can only make a guess, but at the end of the day, it's only a guess. After thinking about it this week, I will just do what you want, even if it's not fair towards me. I think it's for the best that way. I don't want you to be upset and feel sad. So I will work from home, and if I do see you in the school building room, I will go to another room to work from then. I am used to being alone anyways, so it's fine. Does he really think guilt tripping is going to work at this point? They didn't ask him to work from home, they asked him not to contact her, which is exactly what he's doing. I will also say this, I noticed that you aren't in class anymore this week. And in all honesty, it makes me worried. While I don't believe you would do something stupid, it still scares me since you did tell me that in your past you did have those thoughts. Hopefully you were just in another room on school or something like that, and not alone in your room being eaten by your emotions, because of the letter I sent earlier this week to teacher and you. Anyway, now that the first year project part is over, I will be working for most part again at home. So I just wanted to let you know that you won't see me here. So please be around other people that can make you laugh and can make you feel better. I would never have sent this letter if I wasn't busy with all this again last week, but you being absent for a whole week just make me worry a lot about it, since this isn't normal for you. I don't want to experience anything like blank ever again. 1. Censored the teacher's name. And the second one is the name of the girl who died. He had the gall to fucking put her name in his filthy fucking mouth to try to guilt trip me to fucking speak to him again. 
I want to ask you if you have any question for me. Please just ask them. For God's sake, ask them already. I know you want to say I don't have any questions, but it's clear that you are struggling with some things on your end, and if you just asked them, I could answer those questions, or at least try my best. Perhaps if you did ask me some things in the beginning, we wouldn't be where we are now. It would help me also, since maybe I would understand at least why all this happened, because to me you just unfriended me out of the blue, and you never gave me a real reason. And I know you probably don't know the reason for yourself, since you are really a person of in the moment, and that was something I liked about you. But you know, maybe some part of all of this will at least become clearer for the both of us. I will do my best to answer any questions you could have, and hopefully that will give you peace of mind. This isn't easy for me, but I feel it would at least make you better, and maybe you can let all this go then. I hope you at least appreciate my effort. I wasn't struggling with anything. I mostly struggled with realizing that you wanted something I didn't want to give, because I had too little self-worth to realize you wanted something for me in the first place, because the notion was not present in my brain. That was the only thing I struggled with, but now that I realize it, I have no questions. I love how he projects it onto me like, ask me anything, just ask me, when in reality he wishes he had the opportunity or any of my patience or goodwill left to ask me. When I made myself clear that I simply did not want to communicate anymore, and normal people would fucking let it go. If you don't feel like ask me anything, then fine, it's your loss. Hopefully you will at least try and feel better again, and maybe after a few years and you think back at me, you can think better of me. Just to be clear, I just want to help you feel better. I know that we aren't going to be friends anymore. When you unfriended me at first, I thought we could still be classmates, but even that seemed too much for you, so fixing a friendship is completely impossible. I really don't understand this, you know? It's hard to deal with something like this since it doesn't make any sense, and I have somebody who wants to try and find the answer of question, and I try to analyze the situation, as you noticed. But like I said, I thought about how we are now, and if it makes you feel better not seeing me at all anymore, then fine. We probably will see each other only one more time on graduation, and that's it then. Hope that satisfies you and makes you happy. Bye, Blank. Again, my legal name, because we are back to Petty Town. So after this email and the message, the teacher agreed with me that Kevin was a fucking creep and had some issues that needed dealing with. But because it was so close to the end of the year, the committee, of course, was too lazy to pull up actual consequences. But I got a little bit of vengeance because Kevin didn't pass the final. He has a chance at a redo in the summer or next year with the next fourth years in their class. He was not in the group that did it over the summer. Some of my friends were and they told me that he was not there. So he may be in the one for next year. If he is, I have one friend who is doing that, so maybe she will keep me updated on that. But for now, this is the end. He also arrived at the graduation show where all our final works were on display. We are in art school. He was present on two days, the first and last. The last one he had his mother with him. I also heard that after he did not pass, him and his mother went to the dean because he refused to accept their decision. But as we can all see, nothing came of it. Boy called his fucking mom to talk to the dean because he didn't pass and he found it unfair. This is the level of childish we have here. Yeah, that's hilarious, and it's completely believable from the guy who wrote that ridiculous email. This is how Chris Chan's parents were. It was always the school's fault, not Chris's. But yeah, for now, this is it. If you want to know how the game did that he made in the minor, it is shit. The Steam stats are fucking abysmal. Meanwhile, my friend's game was a huge success. I am talking tens of thousands of downloads in the first month and then on a gentle, chillax climb ever since then. People made walkthroughs, streamers played it. Meanwhile, his game with spandex titties in my likeness. Last time I looked, 12 people played it in the last 10 months, four of which are probably some of the group members who had to playtest it. So in a way, I guess I can find satisfaction in the fact nothing this man attempted ever ended in success. No, really, he had to do resets for like every other assignment because he doesn't take criticism from the teachers well and his ideas are conceptual garbage. And I don't say this as an arrogant artist, I find most of my classmates incredibly talented and many of them have a promising future ahead of them, but Kevin just doesn't. You know what's also funny? Cleo, the girl he was really inappropriate towards, who also wrote a complaint to give mine more weight by the way, we're like best friends now and he is a big part of that. Anyway, for now, this is the end. If you got this far in the read, wow, respect. You'll get an upvote if you comment you made it. Edit. So, too much has happened, and I am working on part three, which hopefully will be the final one, and frankly, I don't care if you feel like reading it. At this point, I am updating this so that whenever I meet someone new and they ask about what happened, I can just link them this. 
and then read it to them over a glass of wine or something, to have a little chuckle. Beware, many screenshots ahead, which I will most likely have to compress into a PDF or something. I should mention this is a really obscure subreddit, and the post only has like 36 upvotes, so I'm glad I could be here to make sure thousands of people hear this story. You'd think this would be unusual because this guy was a complete nutjob who obviously saw a different reality than what everyone else saw. But I guess it's not as unusual as you'd hope. Holy shit. That was... something. That guy, though. OP, I hope you are safe and keep yourself safe. This has serious... He stabbed me as I stepped off the bus vibes. I went through something astonishingly similar in my postgraduate studies, and the only way it ended was with a police order and me moving overseas. That was almost 10 years ago, and I still never really feel safe. Also, the part 3 hasn't been released yet, but the author did say she was still working on it, so if it does get finished, and I like it, I'll be back to read it to you. But that is about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you have something to say about this saga, or about anything really, make sure to let me hear it in the comments. Maybe I should link the OP here so she can read what everyone thinks. If you're new here, consider subscribing for similar content and whatever else I come across on the internet. Big ups also to my generous patrons who support me more directly over on Patreon so I can keep doing this for a living. It's a massive help. Well, have a great day, everyone. Try not to violate any restraining orders.